United with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors, serving throughout the Border Valley community, and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation by KSE Channel 38 Christian Television. And now, United with Christ. All right, well, welcome back to this beautiful Thursday with United uh, for Christ. And really, I'm just really excited because this is the episode where, as you've seen the past three episodes every Thursday at this time, it's really young guns in the faith, people in the younger generation who are stepping up for God and making an impression uh, on this generation. So I'm excited about how we are not just going to be talking about ministry, not just talking about scripture, but really the two guests I have today are good friends of mine, and we're going to be talking about the faith from a woman's point of view. And so, again, my name is Alex DiMatteo. I'm the pastor of Oasis Community Church, and I'm very glad that you're tuning in today or watching us out there in the World Wide Web. So, uh, without further ado, I want to introduce my first guest, which is my wife of almost four years, three and a half really. Her name is Katie DiMatteo, and our guest at the far end of the table is also a good friend of mine, a former UTEP athlete in women's soccer, uh, Tess Hall. And so thank you both for being here today. I know you had no choice, uh, but Tess, thank you for coming. Thank and you. so um, Tess, if you'll go ahead and introduce yourself first and tell people who you are, what you do for the Lord, and then Katie, if you'll go ahead and follow her. Sure, absolutely. Well, as Alex said, my name is Tess, and I'm originally from Southern California, but I moved out to Texas to play soccer at UTEP, like Alex said, and coming out to Texas was really where I kind of made my faith my own and realized we can love the Lord and have a passion for Him, and it's not just a legalistic thing. And so I got involved in ministry on campus at UTEP, and just graduated, so now I'm working at Coronado Baptist Church with the high school ministry there. I'm working with all the students. And, and what a good job you do there, Tess. We really appreciate you. And um, So she went from the soccer field to the field of faith, fighting for the Lord and the harvest that he has her in. And so, Tess, glad you're here today, excited mm -hmm. for the input you're going to bring. And Katie, uh, my wife, my love, uh, <laughs> Tell the people out home a little bit about you. Well, um, I'm originally from uh, Ohio. And I met my husband here in New York about four years ago. And I just have a passion for discipleship and discipling young girls. And I just uh, I love working in the ministry with my husband and working with the church. And so my desire and passion is just living and working for the Lord. So... Just Amen. a little bit about me, I guess. Amen. Glad you're here, babe. <laughs> well, often you hear that uh, when it comes to women and things of that nature, there's a lot of chauvinism that can happen when you use a scripture and twist scripture. And often you hear, hey, wives submit. And so there's a whole thing and a whole view out there that, that men just are kind of higher than women and that women just belong at home taking care of babies and barefoot and pregnant as they say but really guys um, we see that God is doing incredible things that it's no longer the 1950s that God is using women in powerful ways and so let's talk about women in faith women in uh, the mission field how God's moving through women how you all see your roles for the kingdom of God. And so let's really first talk about the pressures of, of women in the faith. And so, Tess, I'm going to allow you to lead off here. And if you just want to talk about what do you see the pressures for, for young Christian women nowadays? That's a great question. I think a lot of the pressures that women are facing now, and especially younger generations, is just a pressure to compromise their own identity in Christ in order to mold into the ways of the world. Um, so that could include things such as what they wear, uh, being compromised and not dressing in a manner that honors the Lord, or just in relationships, you know, wanting to 
please people rather than God is a huge pressure. And I think that's something that all women really struggle with in the faith of wanting acceptance from those around them rather than being satisfied in the Lord alone. Mm. So I think those are some big pressures for us these days. Yeah, that's true. Katie, how do you feel about that? I see you nodding your head, but uh, so you definitely agree with her. But yeah. what else do you want to add? I agree. Just the same things that Tess said. There's a pressure to look a certain way, act a certain way, uh, you know, have your uh, body be a certain way. And there's all these pressures, you know, way on all women, but especially younger women. You see a lot in high schools and if, you know, they don't look that that perfect way, they're stressed out trying to get getting that way. And there's just this pressure hanging over them and it doesn't need to be there. God says, I love you the way you are. Yes, we need to take care of our bodies and, and things like that, but we don't need to have that pressure. Let me pause there for a minute and pause for the cause in the sense that this is a call-in show. So if you have questions for Tess or for my wife, Katie, uh, call in. We want to deal with it. We want to address it. If you have prayer concerns, it's what we're here for. As Christians, it's one of our greatest gifts is uh, prayer. Also, hey, we don't do this for free. We do, but the TV show does need the money. Not because they're greedy, but because it takes money to do ministry. And so if you will, guys, $5, $10, hey, decide not to go to Starbucks today, but send that money here. Guys, you will be double blessed. And this station will continue to do good things it does. So, guys, definitely call in for prayer, to talk to us, or to donate. All right? So, with that said, let's talk about some of those pressures that you addressed. Let's, um, let's talk about modesty first. Can we go ahead and do that? Let's talk about modesty because, I mean, for a Christian man, it is hard to just walk out anywhere in the U.S. today with women who wear... Uh, shorts that look more like underwear, you know, with uh, women who wear clothing that is tight, that reveals every curve. Uh, it's, it's tough, but like you all said, it's even tougher to be a woman because you feel like you have this pressure, especially when you look at the magazines, the movies, and things like that. Mm -hmm. Expectations almost. So, uh, Katie, what do you feel about modesty today uh, in America for Christian women? Well, I think... In modesty today is probably, it's really hard today, especially because it's so ex, uh, acceptable to uh, to dress unmodest. You know, and you prep, maybe people out there are wondering, what do you mean by immodest? Well, you know, showing parts that shouldn't be shown or showing more of your body that shouldn't be shown, and that's what I mean by that. And I was just thinking back, you know, growing up, I'm just so thankful for my mom. She would always say, you know, you can't wear that. And, you know, you get upset growing up like, oh, but it's so cute. You know, why can't I wear that? But uh, looking back now, I'm very thankful for that, that I learned growing up to uh, to dress in a way that was pleasing to the Lord. So I, I think today um, it's just that pressure is more, I think, than it used to be. All right. Well, that's true. Well, one of the things that um, when I was thinking about modesty, one of the verses that came to mind is, yes, the Bible talks about women dressing modestly. And it also goes on and talking about, you know, not having braided hair and things of that nature. So, so there's a little confusion there. But even if we just take away that verse, let me share this verse with you. It comes out of 1 Corinthians 10.31. And it says this. It says, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, meaning how you dress, that's part of whatever you do. It says, do it all for the glory of God. And so, Tess, I mean, I th if you apply that to how you dress, I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you kind of have to look at something and say, does this glorify God or not? It's a cute outfit. It's a great price. Man, it looks good on me. I don't know, I, whatever you're thinking. But, I mean, when do you, do you do that? Do you say, okay, is... Even though this is great, does it really glorify God? And so what, what your takes on modesty? Absolutely. And I think in modesty, the goal should always be to glorify God. You know, because I think we could dress modestly all we want and essentially be 
perfect in being modest, but inwardly your heart can still be impure in that. And so I think really the core of this matter is where is your heart in the subject? Is your heart to truly be able to use modesty for the glory of God? Um, or is it more of a legalistic kind of thing of believing that you just have to be modest because that's what the Bible says? Yeah. So I think uh, going along with the verse of whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God, that should definitely apply to our dress and that we would live in such a way and dress in such a way, speak in such a way, just carry ourselves in such a way that people would see our good works and glorify God in heaven. Well, I want to say to both you ladies on TV, I'm not, it's a good thing is that you all uh, are a great example uh, of dressing mm -hmm. modestly and representing the Lord and, and glorifying him. So I really appreciate that. And let me ask you about this though. Do you think that there's an extreme the other way, do you think that you can be too modest, you know, uh, maybe wear too much clothing to the point you're uncomfortable? Because there's got to be a balance here, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And so do you think that sometimes people dress too bundled up or too many layers or maybe where's the, where's the, the fine line? Where's the balance? What's a good healthy balance? Especially for the women who, uh, young women who, well, really should be at school but uh, might be sick, might be homeschooled, hey, good job, um, or playing hooky, you know, you don't know. But for those watching at home, maybe the grandmas, the moms who are kind of wrestling with their kids about this, where's the balance, do you think? Um, can they show any skin, you know, or short sleeve, long sleeve? Kate, why don't you go ahead and take that one? Well, I mean, kind of going back to what uh, Tess was saying, I think there's a point where it can become legalistic, like I have to dress this way, and it's, it's really not according to what God word, God's Word says. But I think, you know, if every time we get dressed, knowing like, okay, I'm dressing to please, please the Lord. I mean, yes, some people might go a little too extreme and, you know, wear long sleeves, wear like a jacket, wear... But I mean, at the end of the day, they have to do what they think is best to um, dress what they think is appropriate and pleasing to the Lord. So... And I was also thinking, you know, since I've been married, I've, I've learned more of how men think and stuff. And by the way we dress, it can cause, especially our brothers in the Lord, to stumble. And so that has made me think, you know, when you get dressed in the morning, like, I don't want to go to church and dress in a sexy outfit and make all the men around me, you know, uh, stumble when they're here to serve the Lord. So just always remembering that too that it's just not looking cute but making sure that uh we're not causing others to stumble around us okay well tess let me ask you this because katie's comment uh sparked this thought okay. former and not too former i mean with within a little bit of time here you just got done utep d1 athlete all right uh for women's soccer and here's the question though that that you see and i'm sure the parents struggle and maybe even the, the girls struggle with this in athletics, what you wear has a lot to do with it. Mm. You know, for, for the women who run track, you know, they don't want too much clothing because it slows them down. Um, swimming even, tight swimsuits. For the Christian women who have to almost force to dress like that, how do you, how do you deal with um, your, your, you know, sports attire as a Christian woman and the whole modesty thing? Absolutely. I think that's a common issue in athletics and seen among so many women where, what do we do? <laughs> and I think at least what I've done and what other girls who I know just love the Lord have done and I followed in their example is kind of like I said before, it's more a matter of their heart in it. Of Are they going to be able to use their uniform and their behavior on the field or the court or whatever athletic event it might be to still shine forth light to Christ. And so to not skimp down the uniform any more than it has to be by any means. But even if maybe in track you have to wear a tighter uniform, you can still represent Christ in that and you can still use that unto his name and be a light there on that track field. Well, 
Colossians 3.17 says, And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. And so I thank you both for being a shining example, showing people that you can do that and still be a Christian, represent your faith. Um, let's talk about a big one, even bigger than modesty, all right, is, is the issue of sex. Because, hey, it's true, 13-year-olds, 14-year-olds are getting pregnant. Um, it's not uncommon to see women, young ladies in high school, walking around eight months pregnant. It's, it's a norm. I mean, it, it, you go into the high schools, and sometimes they're comparing their sonogram photos. Young high school ladies. Um, let's talk about that pressure. Let's talk about, um, Tess, if you want to take this one first. Young women in the faith trying to live for Christ and the, pe- the pressures of trying to stay sexually pure. Absolutely. For that, what I believe is the key to sexual purity in the Lord is knowing where your identity is found. Because I think the pressure arises from being tempted into pleasing people rather than the Lord. When women, young girls in high school, are tempted by their peers to compromise and to conform to the patterns of the world. So if our identity is truly found in being daughter of the Lord, and just as Paul talks about in Corinthians, of you know, if I'm still trying to please man, I'm not a disciple of the Lord. You know, am I here to please people or to please God? And, and so I think we as leaders and as examples need to be able to show that their identity is found in Christ and they've died with him, they've risen with him, and they're no longer their own. So to be able to glorify God in that and to not conform to the ways of the world because they know they're here to please God and to bring glory to him rather than people. Hmm. I like what you're saying, uh, especially with the identity part. And Katie, I hope I don't steal your thunder here if I, if, if I were thinking the same thing. But in, in the Gospels, when Jesus is going through the uh, fasting uh, for 40 days, right after he gets baptized, he goes off in the desert. And then Satan comes to him. Mm-hmm. And the first thing that Satan says to him is he says, If you are God. If you are the Lord. So really, even Satan, with Jesus, tried to attack his identity. Mm. Question, make him try to prove something. Um, so when you say, if you know your identity and you're, you're comfortable with who you are in Christ, that's a good head start. And so, guys, I just want you to know, young ladies at home, if you're being pressured by your boyfriend to sleep with you, if you set up barriers, walls, boundaries is the best word, and he keeps leaping over them or pushing through them, he doesn't respect you. He's just going to get what he wants to get, and then once he gets it, hey, most likely he'll be gone. But if your boyfriend truly does love you, he's going to respect you, and he's going to wait till marriage to enjoy sex. Not because it's a cool thing, but because thus says the Lord in his word. Katie. Um, what are your thoughts on this? Because as you and I have discussed in the past in our own marriage, especially the pressures for the young women, if you don't have sex, if you're a virgin in high school, in college, you're actually considered an oddity nowadays yeah. instead of being like, hey, good job, way to fight. No, people look down at you like, hey, what's wrong with you? Talk about that pressure, if you will. Well, that is true. Um, They do look at you differently because, like you said, having sex before marriage, that that is becoming more of a norm, so someone not doing it is not as normal, and so people do look at them differently. And I guess I just say to the person that that is saving themselves for marriage, just know that God is going to bless you for that, and don't don't listen to the others that are pressuring you to do that. And if you're in a relationship, like Alex said, that that's pressuring you to do that, then I would encourage you to get out of that relationship because I don't think the Lord wants you in that relationship because that to have um, sex before marriage is, is not what God has intended. And I know from my own experience, um, I saved myself for marriage, and I know girls 
that your husbands will appreciate it and respect it so much and it is so worth it and then you and if there's girls out there like well I've already had sex before marriage but, well you know as it saw, says in Psalms 865 you are forgiving and good O Lord abounding in love to all who call upon you God is God loves you and forgives you and you can save yourself for your husband yes you may have done that in high school but you know like I'm not going to do that anymore. I I made that mistake. I, you can still save yourself for the man that you are going to marry. And like I said, God will bless you for that, and your husband will appreciate that very much. So just in that aspect, I know. Kate, I like the way you said that. So I don't want to build on something that's already built pretty well. I appreciate that answer. Um, a verse that that I really thought about preparing for this show uh, it, it talks to men but it applies to women as well and it says this uh, it says in Psalms uh, 119 verse 9 through 11 it talks about this it says how can a young man keep his way pure how can anyone keep their way pure really is it says this here's the answer by living according to your word guys it's all right here whatever you need Whatever answers you're seeking, God's one and only love letter to you. I highly recommend it. It really provides guidance better than really anything. You know, the, the further we get away from the Bible, the more laws we have to make. But the closer we get to the Bible, the more we live in God and the more we trust in Him and the more we understand His purpose and plan for our lives. And so... Again, I want to call, uh, ask you guys, call in. We got two wonderful ladies here who would just love to answer your questions. If you have prayer requests, it's what we do. We're Christians. We pray. Um, or if you just want to give to the show, $5, $10, $10,000, hey, no complaints. So just want to encourage you guys to go ahead and do that. Let's talk about this. Um, let's talk about... Uh, women in the workplace. Um, it's really expected now that a woman, you graduate high school, uh, you go off to college, you go get a great paying job, and then you try and get married, then you search for a man. But you better get yourself independent, you need to get yourself totally secure before you ever look for a man. At least that's a lot of the pressures we hear out there. And there's nothing wrong with, with women getting high school degrees or college degrees. I encourage it. I'm all for it. But let's talk about that pressure. Um, do you think it's that women have to go do all that stuff? Or do you think that it's okay for uh, women to get married young and to have uh, families young? Uh, Kate, why don't you go ahead and, and share your views on that? Well, I got married at a young age. I was 21 when I got married. Uh, I just did two years of Bible college, and then after that, I got married to you. But I think just at the end of the day, when you're following after the Lord, and you're seeking what God says in His Word, and seeking after what God has for you in your life, and you're following after that and doing what God says, then it all it's all going to work out. And you know, that's great if you do have a high-paying job and before you get married, a lot of that stuff, there's nothing wrong with that. But as long as you're doing what the Lord wants you to do, I I pray for a long time for my husband. And uh, my desire was to be in the min ministry, to be a missionary and serve the Lord. God knew my heart. And right after I got done with Bible college, uh, God blessed me to, to marry you and I followed after that because I knew that's what the Lord wanted me to do, and He has blessed me ever since. So I just say, we just, if you're seeking after the Lord, you'll know if what you're doing is right or wrong. I like what you said, babe, um, that I'm a blessing. But uh, also, I like what you said that uh, really it's just seeking the Lord's will uh, for your life. And I don't want to, to, to discourage women from going further. And I don't want to discourage women from getting married early. Really, it comes down to what has God called you to do? That's really what it is. And so it's not some guy on in TV land telling you what to do, but it's really you seeking the, the, the favor and the direction of God. Tess, uh, quickly tell us 
your thoughts on this? I have to agree with Katie completely. I think what it comes down to is obedience to the Lord personally, of you seeking His face for your own life, seeking His strength and His will, and, and then obeying it, whether it be get married young or whether it be go to college and start a career. The Lord has a plan, and if we follow it, that will be best for us. Okay. I appreciate that a whole lot. And so one of the things that we like to do on this show and we're going to do in a, in a quick minute is we're going to pray for the young women out there who, who may be watching or the moms and dads struggling with their kids, grandmas, grandpas. Uh, before we do that, because we know this show is on the Internet too, so um, Tess and then Katie, is there anyone you want to give a shout-out to? <laughs> Maybe mom, dad, grandma, I don't know. Tess, why don't you oh, go ahead? sure. Hi, Mom and Dad, if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and I uh, hope they are watching. Uh, good, good folks. Katie, who do you want to give a shout-out to? Hi, Grandma Bert, if you're watching, because I, I know she enjoys watching this show and any of my family and anyone out there. And I was also thinking, I know a good book about sexual purity. It's called Lady in Waiting. If any young woman is out there looking for a, a good book to read about that, Lady in Waiting is a really good book. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and let's, let's pray real quick um, just for God's blessing on, on these pressures that women face. Heavenly Father, God, we just come before you. We just ask that you lift up all the young women who, who have either lost their virginity or struggling to hold it or need to be encouraged. For the women who uh, are, are wrestling with modesty, for the women who are trying to find direction, whether they should go into the workplace or stay home or do both. God, we lift these women up to you, and I just thank you so much. May you bless them, may you show them, may you guide them, may you direct them. In your precious name we pray, amen. And so, uh, everyone out there in TV land, everyone watching on the internet, uh, I just want to thank you so much for tuning in today. I want to thank our special guest, Tess Hall, for coming out. That's a real blessing. I want to thank my wife. Uh, so that she makes me dinner tonight. I uh, appreciate you a whole lot, babe, for being here. No problem. And so, uh, everyone, thanks for watching United with Christ, and have a great day. Thank you for watching United with Christ. We pray this has been a blessing to you, and we invite you to tune in again tomorrow. We invite your comments, questions, or prayer requests. You may contact us at KSE Christian Television, 2201 East Wyoming Avenue, El Paso, Texas, 79903. Or call us at 915-532-8588 during regular business hours. Or you can visit our website at www.kscd.com. God bless you. Please consider partnering with us so that together, KSCE Life can continue to broadcast the best Christian programs for your viewing enjoyment and blessing. Contributions can be sent to KSCE Life Christian Television or through our website, or by phoning the office Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Together, we will make a difference.